there is a story or a children's lesson that goes on about arguing with donkeys and how foolish it is to do that, that a donkey is going to be stubborn and just refuse to listen. And we all know somebody in the rodeo industry that is going to argue with that judge's call, no matter what it is, no matter who that judge is, and no matter how right or wrong they are about it, they're not going to listen and they're going to miss that opportunity to learn from that judge or take correction and be able to do better the next time. I'm Scott Hilgendorf with Cowboys of the Cross, and this is The Short Go. So we're going to look at an Old Testament uh, account, and it's a complicated one. I'm going to try to take just a simple lesson about arguing with donkeys from this in a, a section that tells us about a talking donkey. So this is from Numbers chapter 22. We're going to look at verses 28 through 34. But what's happening here is we've got a person, Balaam, that has been instructed by God to carry out some certain instructions that are going to lead him towards giving blessings to the Israelites in opposition to a ruler that wants him instead actually to curse them in in God's name. And he has been given very specific instruction on what he's to do, and instead it appears that he's motivated by the offering of money from this other leader and maybe prestige. And so he is sort of doing what God wants him to do, but then not really. And so as he's on this journey to go to this place where he's to, to offer this curse um, that this leader thinks that he's going to do instead, the donkey stops and, and tries to redirect him. He changes path on the road and Balaam beats him or her. And the donkey then, uh, runs him into a narrow place and lays on the ground and stops moving forward and he beats his donkey again. And what we then see happening is this. This starts at verse 28. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey and he said to Balaam, what have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, because you've made a fool of me, I wish I had a sword in my hand for then I would kill you. And the donkey said to Balaam, am I not your donkey? on which you have ridden all your life long to this day. Is it my habit to treat you this way? And he said, no. Then the Lord opened the eyes of Balaam, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way and his, and his drawn sword in his hand. And he bowed down and fell on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to oppose you because your way is perverse before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside before me these three times. If she had not turned aside from me, surely just now I would have killed you and, and let her live. Then Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know that you stood in the road against me. Now, therefore, if it is evil, if it is evil in your sight, I will turn back. So what happened is Balaam was spared by the donkey. God allowed the donkey to see that there was an angel in the path that was prepared to strike him down if he continued in the direction that he was going in. And without understanding that, of course, he's beating the donkey until he is allowed then to see that there is an angel in his path, sword drawn, ready to, to strike him. And uh, it comes to that realization then that he was incredibly wrong in what he did to the donkey and incredibly wrong in his motives and intentions. And so God did allow him to continue on and he goes on to, to serve God's purpose, which was to offer then blessings against what this other leader was, was asking and expecting uh, and bribing him towards or offering him things towards. Um, he ends up offering three different blessings at three different opportunities to the Israelites on behalf of God. So good comes from this. But what I want us to understand is that we need to set our stubbornness aside and, and recognize that if God has a call for us, if we know there's something he wants to do uh, and we know what's right from wrong, sometimes we don't know necessarily what a sin is because we haven't specifically uncovered it in scripture for ourselves to realize that a certain attitude or behavior might be sinful. But there are lots of times and opportunities where we know that we're doing something that's wrong or goes against what God would ask of us. And so I think what we need to see is that God is incredibly patient and incredibly merciful with us. And again, that's why he gave us Jesus Christ who died on the cross uh, for our sins is so that we could be saved through that sacrifice that he made for us by dying and taking the punishment meant for us. But we see that there's just this incredible patience that God offers to us, knowing that we're going to mess things up, knowing that we're going to get things wrong. But this can be an encouragement then to us to not be stubborn about things when we know God wants us to do something, that we need to follow him and we need to do what we know is right by him. Not that it earns us anything special. We can't earn anything more than the salvation that Jesus gave us. But because we understand what he did for us on that 
cross, then we have a desire to do what's right. So instead of being stubborn donkeys, let's go ahead and, and do what it is that we know God wants us to do in those moments when it is clear. And if it isn't clear to us, we've, we've got an entire book that helps us to understand it. And we know pastors, we know other people out there that can help us to know what is the right thing to do and that they would take it from an understanding in scripture. It always goes back to scripture. I hope that's helpful. Cowboyslacrosse.com. We've got lots of material on there to try to teach you things that we hope is helpful, that we hope directs you on the right path so that you don't have to uh, be hindered and have God put something in your path to stop you and redirect you. Cowboyscross.com. Check us out. We'll talk to you soon.